apple cider. That's one of the ingredients in a video that I made last week. How can we take this already delicious, sweet, and savory drink and kick it up a notch? Well, that is the thing for today's video. I have got some already well-recorded drums, and we're gonna be spicing things up. For my apple cider, I've got some honey and some cinnamon. For the drums, we're gonna add some EQ, some compression, and some parallel compression, which may be a new term to you. And I wanna share some tips and tricks with you to elevate your drum mix and get it from here to here. Real quick, did you know that in 1985, the Goonies came out? That's right. I was only about four years old because I'm a December baby, and I saw the movie for the first time when I was about eight or nine. Guess what's coming up? And if you're ready, let's do this. But first, a sip of apple cider. Hey, you guys. What's up? Do you want to learn how to take your drum mixes from this? All the way to this. Well, stick with me because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's start this process by sweetening up our already good tasting cider. Let's drizzle in some honey. And we'll add some cinnamon flavoring. Noise. Wow, my taste buds are going crazy. So many extra flavors just by adding those two ingredients. Let's get these out the way and let's tackle this mix. So this session was originally recorded February 10th of 2015. This is just a drum track. It's a kick, snare, a hi-hat, three toms, and then two overhead. So pretty basic. Let's make this bigger. We can do that in three ways. If we click here, down in the bottom, right here is your plus and minus. Make that bigger for my old eyes. And remember, we wanted to have the A to Z turned on. That way we can hit T, it widens things or shrinks them. Let's just uh, listen to this. We'll notice we have a click track and this is not with the click at all, but that's okay. Turn that off. Option click, puts things at unity. Zero. Cool little Tom fill. Nice little Tom fill again. Cool, so how can we make that better? We'll do a couple things. Let's start off by, if we click over here, we'll notice we have an all. So that was already created with a group. To create a group, Command G, you drag and drop things over and then hit add. We've already got that group selected, so we're good. We hit option and click on a fader. It'll put everything at unity. I'm gonna get rid of this. And on our first insert on the kick drum, I'll go up here and type in trim. There we go. And that's gonna be like a gain. So what we're gonna do is make sure each one of these is hitting about negative 15 to negative 12. Let's just solo this and we'll start at the beginning. Recorded pretty well. So we're good there. Let's move on to our snare have to move this over so option drag not bad let's pull that up just a little bit a 
the kick and snare are your one, two, three, four. So we really want that snare to be prominent. Let's take a look at our hi-hat. Drive this over. So we'll notice that the hi-hat's kind of all over the place here. We're softer, then it gets a little louder. It's a lot louder here. So ultimately we put some uh, compression on that to kind of bring those high parts down and the lower parts up. But for now, let's do this. Let's click right here. We'll do inserts A through F. So now we can see our inserts, our trim. Let's do the sends and then IO. So, a little loud. Okay, cool. Let's highlight Tom one, specifically just that part there. Not bad, Tom two, and then four Tom. Okay, overhead left. Bring this up a little bit. Then we'll just option and drag that. So now we've got our overheads. So let's start EQing this. Right here on our kick drum, we'll go to an insert, plug in EQ. And my favorite is the Fab Filter Pro Q2. I think I'll get the Pro Q3. We got some holiday season sales coming up. Let's select a section right here. Real quick, when it comes to EQ, there is a common theory. And what that is, whenever you boost something, that raises the volume. But if you're able to cut out frequencies, you can listen to things and find out what sounds harsh, what maybe doesn't sound good, and remove those. So that's a good theory to use. So we'll do a little bit of that on all this mix here. So what we'll notice is we have in this area, we have a prominent frequency that is the frequency that we want to boost right here in this area. Let's low cut that or we'll cut that out because it's rumble, it's boominess. We don't want that in there. And then we'll notice in this area, we've got a good section of mid range that we can pull out. So watch this. I'm going to pull this section out here pretty aggressively and watch and listen to what that does to this. It'll really come out even more. Do you notice that? And we'll pull this down a little bit. For the kick drum, we have our fundamental, which is right here. And then we also have a frequency towards the higher register of the EQ spectrum. That's gonna be between 2.5 and 4K. That'll add some punch and attack and really get that clickiness of the beater hitting that head. And that's gonna be about in this area. Let's see. Looks like it's probably like right in here. Yep. So that is almost 4,400. So we'll boost that, make that kind of more of a... Cool, so here's our kick drum without it. Yeah, it's punchy, it's smacking you in your face. Let's move on to our snare. One thing we can do is if we option and drag Pro Q2 down, that will bring it from one insert to the next. Now we'll notice that it's got the same EQ as the kick drum, so we'll just go over here and default setting. Two things that I wanna do on this snare drum. We want to EQ it, and then we're gonna add a gate, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Let's take a look at the EQ. Well, we notice that here's a fundamental. It's got some of that low end. Let's roll this off. All of this area, we don't want that. We'll low cut that. 
We'll put some of that mid-range frequency out. And then right here, just kind of like on the kick drum, we have that punch and attack. Well, maybe not punch, but more so the attack. So that's really gonna give this a lot of character and bite. See how that's doing it. That's way too much, but we'll pull that down to about here. Make that a narrow boost. Bypass. Now here's the snare with EQ on. So that's a lot snappier, tighter, and punchier. Now let's address the gate. What is a gate? Do you have a gate around maybe the front yard of your yard or backyard? Well, it either keeps things out or allows things to stay in. For this snare, what we want to do is we want to just hear that snare only. We notice there's some kick drum and hi-hat recorded in here, and I want to take that out. So let's go to an insert, and we'll go to dynamics. And for this, we'll just use the standard built-in stock plug-in here. I think it's the Dyn 3 Expander Gate. So we'll have some knobs on here. We have what's called the threshold. So we're gonna raise this up until we hear only that snare kick in. Kind of like magic, huh? But there's a couple other things we need to do. We notice that we just hear the We don't hear the whole snare, so we just hear the So what I wanna do is on the attack, attack quick. The attack is how quickly the gate will shut. So we're gonna pull that down a little bit. And then on the hold, I don't want that too much of a hold. And then we'll take a release and let that kind of drag a little bit. So we hear more of that whole snare hit the So we get a little bit of that hi-hat in there, but Overall, it gives us a more tightened snare sound. Let's listen to that in the whole mix. Cool. So let's take a look at the hi-hat. So we'll notice that in different sections, this beginning part, the 16th notes are a little quieter and then it gets a lot louder here. So we can fix that in two ways. We can use compression, where it brings the high parts down and lower parts up, it kind of squashes things or we can clip gain this. So we'll try both of those here, but for now, we'll just concentrate on EQ. We will pull this down, default setting. So if you're not familiar with what the hi-hat is, it's a set of two symbols. This on the left-hand side, actually for your view, the left-hand side of the drummer, and they can click it where it's, they can put it where it's closed. You can make it open or go, or you have it sound which we hear here. So we're gonna roll off a lot of that low end so we just concentrate on that high pitch sound. So you notice here's the kick drum and snare. We'll take all of that out by going to a low cut. A little too much. And then like right here, we'll do a high shelf. Oops, low shelf, high shelf. Just a little bit. And I'm noticing that's pretty loud, so we'll take a volume and we'll pull that down. Let's see how that sounds in context with things. Not bad. Let's address tom number one. Solo that, pull this EQ down. We can kind of think of the tom as a smaller kick drum. You're gonna have that lower fundamental, and then you're gonna have a little fundamental at the top here too. So let's see what that is. Right here, lower to mid range is our fundamental. We will roll all that dirtiness out, pull some of the mid range out. It looks like here's our fundamental in the higher range. EQ off. Sounds dry. A little more character to it. Cool. Then let's address tom number two. We'll just drag the Pro Q2 down. 
it may be pretty similar. It may be a little different because this is a lower tom, so you might have to address the frequencies. They might be a little different. Yeah, this one's a little more down here. This fundamental is about the same. I'm gonna pull another section out here in the 500s. Okay, EQ off. On. It's got some more character to it. Sounds a little more rounded and tightened up. Tom three, do the same thing. Pull the Pro Q two down. We may have to adjust the frequencies again. About the same, we'll pull that up a little here. Off. On. Yeah, you definitely notice a little more uh, maybe more mature sounding. It's a little tighter, well-rounded. Overhead left. So Pro Q2 drag down, and then we'll go to default setting here. This is gonna cover the whole kit, so we're gonna have a wide range of frequencies. So we'll have to do some uh, interesting things here. Let's click towards the end here. Here's our kick. So we'll boost that and we'll take all that low end rumble out. So we're gonna capture that low end on the kick drum, pull out some of this mid range. And then right here, I wanna do another high shelf to capture some of the high of the cymbals. So we'll click here and do a high shelf and just boost that a little bit. And then we'll just drag that down. Cool. Let's listen to everything from the beginning. Pull the hi-hat down a little bit. Okay, one thing I want to do on the hi-hat is when it starts going into the ch -ch -ch, this section here, we will hit B and B again, and then we'll take this and we'll just pull that down. So here's the 16th notes and it goes on the ch -ch. Cool, command S, best friend, save. Okay, if we go here, let's do this. We'll take a look at compression. We're gonna take a look at parallel compression. First thing, these tracks here are just extras, so we'll control, click, hide, and make it inactive. Makes those goes away. It makes them go away. Recently on this channel, we've talked about what compression is. Just to recap it, if you have a section of audio that's a little quieter, and then you have a section that's a little louder, Basically, compression takes the louder parts down and brings the quieter parts up. But what is parallel compression? Let's say we have a track here, maybe on these drums that we want to bring out. What we do is we create another aux and we have the same input. And then on this second input, we add a compressor. We just take that compressor and we just crank that signal. So that is what parallel compression is. Let me show you real quick. So let's do this. We will title this aux drums. So on our drums, our input is stereo bus one and two. We highlight all the drum tracks, shift option, and we take our output instead of stereo two mix, we'll go to bus and one and two. So those are all getting routed to this channel here. So we have to actually make that output our stereo mix. Okay, so check this out. So that is controlling all of the drums. 
let's do this. We'll create a new track, but this time we'll make it a stereo aux input. What that's gonna do is we'll put that right here. We'll call this drum comp. So what we'll do is put this as the same input, stereo bus one and two, but we're gonna squash the heck out of this. But first, let's EQ this specific track. One thing you want to do when it comes to auxes and buses, hit command and the solo. So that's called solo safe. So that way you don't accidentally solo just out. On our drums, let's do a Pro Q2. We'll have to do this separately because it's a stereo track now. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll EQ this a little more uh, aggressively. So here's our kick drum. Here's the back of the snare. And then this will make a high shelf. Cool. And then what we'll do on this drums comp is we're gonna put a compressor on here. And we're just gonna squash the out of this. So we'll go to dynamics and we'll just do the bomb factory 76. So we're just gonna crank this. Here we go. Now what we'll wanna do on this drum comp is pull this down. See that crazy compression. And then we'll just slowly bring this up. Wow, you notice that's really coming out. Okay, we'll just keep it there. Now we're seeing that this master is clipping. Two things to solve that. Let's do a little bit of EQ on this here. Remember when it comes to the master fader, we wanna do small movements. So we will go to EQ and the Fab Filter Pro Q2. Small movements. We'll roll all this off, not that much. All right, so then what we'll do is put a limiter on here. So that way things are limited. It's not going past a certain threshold. If we go to the next insert, then we go to dynamics, and then let's scroll down here and find a good limiter. There's one called Maxim. It is the one that comes with Pro Tools. Let's take the ceiling down to negative 3.1. I had is still a little crazy. Let's take these overheads and pull those down a bit too. All right, so let's listen to this from the very beginning all the way through here. Here we go. Wait a minute. We are still clipping, so let's take maximum and take that down. And then let's actually do this. Pull the drums comp down a little bit. Let's take that to about 3.5, 3.7, okay. There we go. One thing we didn't do on the hi-hat is put some compression on here. So we'll go to dynamics and let's just do the Bomb Factory 76 again.
Okay, I think we've got too much compression going on here. It's way too much. Let's pull that back down. Now, let's take a look at things. Yeah, much better. But, one more thing we can do. Yeah, that sounded real good. All right, this video was all about taking some ingredients to spice up our cider and some ingredients to spice up our drum mix. I added honey and cinnamon to the cider, and for the drums we added EQ, some compression, and limiting. We put things in a group, we added some parallel compression, and we really got these drums to sparkle and shine. They came out wonderfully in my opinion. Wrapping things up for today, just like the Goonies, I want to be the treasure that you are seeking. I want to be the hidden gem and treasure that you are looking for. Since you're watching, that means our paths have already crossed. And I'm thankful for that. But if you have any other friends that want to learn music production, tell them about the channel. Let's grow this thing together. I want to be a household name and people to come to this channel to learn music production. And make sure to go ahead and check out the rest of my Fall Mixes series. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. My name is Paul, the fifth of Legacy Studios Nash.